Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're actually going to look at lists in SwiftUI. So in this video we're going to cover all the basics that you need to know about lists. So lists in SwiftUI allow us to add content in a single column so you can actually have related content within a column that users can scroll through similar to how you have a feed on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. So first of all let's actually just create a simple list with some text to show you how this works. So let's delete our text view here. And instead, we're just going to type out list. So when you're working with lists like so, you get a closure. And within the closure, this is where you're able to add your content. Now, what I'm going to do is create a static list because I'm going to define my text views up front. So let's do that now. Cool. And as you can see, on our app, we now have our three items defined within our list. And if I run this, you're able to see that I'm able to scroll this up and down. So if I had more items, I'd be able to view the ones that are currently off screen. So this is an example of a static list with static items. And if you just, this serves your purpose, then great. But what about if you're in a situation where you actually need to add more items and you actually need to have a dynamic list of items? Well, it's not actually possible for you to add the data and then keep on doing app releases. So what you need to do is sometimes you may need to listen to data from some kind of source or you know API database, wherever they, that may be. Now, what we wanna do is we actually wanna see how we can actually create a dynamic list using this. So to solve this, what we wanna do is pass in to our list some kind of source of truth so that it's able to read from it and lay out the views within it. So I'm going to create a source of truth within this file and then we'll break it down. So what I've got here is I've got a static constant which is called items and this is just an array of strings from one to 10. So we're going through each value between one to 10 and we're just mapping it with a string and we're just adding that range value within here. So this is just an array of strings that says item one to 10. So now we need to actually update our list to use our items within our array to lay out their views. So let's actually type this one out together and we'll break it down. So let's actually delete this here and we'll just type it out fresh. So if I just say list, and then what we wanna do is we actually wanna use the list initializer like so. And then to pass into our list, we wanna pass in items. So this is actually going to pass our items and our list is going to read through this array. But it's not able to identify what item is it's not able to identify items uniquely so in order to fix this what we need to do is actually tell it the items and how to identify them uniquely so let's just add in this parameter here called id and for the id we're going to say that we want you to uniquely identify yourself using self so we're going to use a key path here self okay cool so now when you do this you actually do get another argument in the list here so now we're able to get the item in this array. So it's going to loop through all of them and then pass us the item here. So what we're going to do is just display that on to some text like so. Cool. And now you can see that we get a list of all our items from our array. And if I was to increase this to something like 100, I can hit resume you'll see that our list now updates and we're able to scroll through all of the items. So cool. So this is a simple example of using a string, but what about if we actually want to loop through and display our own custom objects like a product with a name? Well, what we need to do is we'd have to actually create a struct and make sure that our struct conforms to the identifiable protocol. So let's do that now. So if we create a struct at the top here called product, And then within this struct, we're just going to give it a name. So our product can have a name like so. Okay, cool. So now rather than us looping through and creating an array of strings, let's now actually create an array of products. So let's update this here. So rather than us having this, we're going to put this within our product initializer when we set the name like so. Cool. So now, when you do that, you should realize that you get an error. And the first error here says that it requires product to conform to Hashable because it doesn't actually know how to uniquely identify each product. Now, one way to fix this is you could actually say the ID is going to be the name. 
thought I wouldn't recommend doing this because what about you have a product with the same name? Now the list will be confused as to which one is the, the real one because you've got two duplicate ones. It doesn't know which one or how to make it unique. So in order to actually fix this and make it better, we can actually use the identifiable protocol. And if you want to learn more about this, then you can check out my video for each and identifiable in Swift UI. So on our product, let's make it conform to identifiable. And then after doing this, we then need to give it an ID. So the reason why I've used a UUID is because I know with UUIDs, it's almost impossible to get duplicates. So now, Rather than identifying the list items by their name, we can actually just remove this completely and the list will actually automatically identify each item uniquely by using this ID property that we've defined here, which is its UUID. So we've also got another problem here now. So the problem is now is that our item isn't returning a string anymore, so we're not able to just pass it in. Now, what we need to do is we need to actually access the name on our item. So if we just do item dot name like so and if you just run your swift UI preview again you should see that you have no errors and everything is working fine so this is all good so now our list is automatically picking up that our objects are identifiable and is using the id property in order to uniquely identify each item and then we get the name out of the item too so now we have our list set up and we can see all of our you know item products. Now, if you want a screen with a simple list like this, then this solution that we have here is great. But what about if I actually want to customize my list and I want to add items in between each one, or if I want to have a view that is actually part of my list. Well, right now I'm not able to, well, right now I'm not able to actually do that because what this list is doing is it's just looping through all the items on the screen. I'm not able to actually just specifically add a view at the top of the list or at the bottom of the list as well. And in order to approach this, and in order to in order to achieve this goal, what we need to do is we actually need to use our list, but this time we want to actually embed a for each within it. So let's actually look at how we can do this now. So rather than declaring the items like so, like this, let's remove this and remove this as well. So within our list, let's now use the for each view to loop through our items. Cool. So now what we have here is we're now doing a similar thing to the list, but this time we're adding a for each to actually loop through all the items and display them in this list. And because we've now used the for each, if I wanted to, I could actually add my own custom view within the list above all of these product items like so. And now you can see that this individual item is above all of them within this list, not in the example before where we couldn't actually have this level of customization. So this is when you would want to use for each. And for me personally, I actually prefer to use for each for this reason, because I now am able to have full customization over my lists. So right now, our list looks like the system default. But if we wanted to, we can actually customize the way it looks also. So we actually have a modifier called list style that allows us to change the appearance. So let's go through each one now. So in our SwiftUI preview, we're actually going to see the effect that applying each style has on the list. So we can actually compare and look to compare the look and feel of each one. So let's do this now. So it's worth noting that because I'm actually doing this on the Swift UI preview, it's not going to be on the final view that gets rendered in the simulator. So if you want this to be rendered on the actual simulator, you need to apply this modifier directly onto the list here. So let's just do this in the Swift UI preview and then we'll break it down. So in order to see each one, you want to stop it from running. And in the Swift UI preview, here, the previews, you can see that I've given each one their own name so we can identify what they look like. So let's just go through them. So if we start at the top, you'll see we have automatic. And what automatic does is what the name implies, depending on the OS, depending on the device that you're using, it will automatically apply a style onto the list. And then the next one, if we scroll down, is plain style. And you can see with plain style, you don't really get that same border and gray background that you do with 
um, the other examples. So this can be useful if you want to just have a list that you know is completely plain and you want to add your own custom customization. Then if we scroll down, we have group style. So what group style allows you to do is you can see here that it doesn't like cut it off with the border, but we still get that gray background and we can almost group our you know sections together with this style. And then we also have inset style where you can see that it's kind of inset a bit more compared to the other one. So we have more space on the left hand side. And then finally, we have inset grouped where it's inset on the left hand side, but this time the view is grouped. So you get that style like you did in the first example. So we're not just limited to changing the list as well. So what you could actually do as well is you can actually apply styles onto the items within the list auto. So let's say right now we want to hide a separator in our list. Well, starting with iOS 15, you're actually able to do that by using a modifier. So let's actually add this in and then check it out. So in order to do this, what we need to do is on our text here. So I'm just going to delete this my products because we don't want this example no more. So on our text, we're able to use the list row separator. And then we're going to set this to hidden. And now you should see that we're not able to see our separator anymore because we've hidden it. So this is if you want to remove the separators on the list. And we can even target our list background as well. So if we wanted to, we can actually change the background of each individual list item to all be the same. So let's actually do this now. So after this, we can say list row background, and then we can set this to a color of mint. Cool. And as you can see, we're able to get a green background on all of them. So we're able to, you know, just set the list row background easily. And then finally, the last thing I want to show you is how we can actually change the inset of this. So we can actually control where these items actually start from within their row. So let's do that now. And as you can see, because we've applied a leading of seven of six there, it's now pushed our view more to the from the leading edge. So you can actually control where your views are started from with an inset. So you can check out all those options that are available to you. And this is just a basic introduction to lists. In the next set of videos, we'll look at how we can actually build on top of this example to see the great features that lists give us. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left some feedback in the comment section below. Also, as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up, as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.